Welcome to our multi-part series for Inventor Back to Basics. Today we're going to be continuing on looking at some of the best practices and basic functionality within the assembly environment. So as you may have noticed, this is part one of two, possibly more in our mini series for Inventor Back to Basics. Uh, the assembly environment is very extensive. There's a lot of things to cover, a lot of different things to talk about. So I'm going to try to squeeze as many as I can into these short little video segments and not sure how many we'll end up with. But we're going to start out looking at building your assembly. So I'm going to first start out by creating a standard assembly and placing a component. And one thing that is missed by a lot of new users as well as a lot of experienced users is it's always a good practice to place a component and within your assembly have at least one component grounded there's a lot of different reasons for this especially if you're going to look at any kind of movement or simulate any kind of movement or animate any kind of movement especially in real time that can save you a lot of time and effort if you have one component grounded to start with personally I like having the first component you place be grounded but that's not always applicable depends on what you're building maybe the third or fourth or really doesn't even matter as long as you have one component grounded going back and looking at when you place a component during that place process you have the option to change the orientation of your component before you ever place it and you can right click and you can rotate your component in 90 degree increments around the X Y or Z axis so I'm gonna rotate this one in the Y axis direction it may not rotate in the direction you were assuming it would you just keep right clicking and rotating until you get the proper orientation once you have the orientation you like you can either left click to place it or simply right click and place it grounded at the origin now what that does is it takes the zero 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 of the piece part or sub assembly that you're placing and it places it in alignment to the zero 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 of the assembly so once that component is placed I can place another component with it and that will take us right into our next topic of discussion and that's working with either joints or constraints that question comes up a lot especially with new users or in training for the new user class and students will often ask which one do I use constraints or joints the chief reason for having joints in an assembly is they are used by the simulation engine otherwise you're going to use assembly constraints so why have any grounded components to begin with well if you have any motion within your assembly and you wish to see or represent that motion especially in a real-time sense you want to have a grounded component so that all the components don't start walking around on you and changing the design and configuration of your assembly so for example with this particular setup I've got the base of the machine vise grounded but the jaw subassembly can slide based on the constraints that I have applied that grounding of the base allows me to grab those components and see that movement that also takes us into the next topic for the assemblies the next topic is working with flexible components many different CAD packages out there refer to flexibility in different terms and in different situations for inventor flexibility means for sub assemblies you can see their range of motion in a higher level assembly so for example looking at this suspension system that's in place if we want to see the suspension working or see the wheels flex up and down that is controlled by this shock absorber sub assembly as it stands right now I cannot drag components and move that because this shock absorber is statically locked if I right click on that component go down towards the bottom and you'll see flexible if I choose or check flexible now when I grab other components I can see that assembly motion I can see that range of movement now this also brings up a third type of back to basics and a little bit of a best practice as well looking at the spring that's built into the shock absorber you will notice that by default that spring is not compressing or expanding can this be done 
Yes. Is it practical? Not really. You're going to spend a lot of time trying to get this modeled and working and you're not really going to get a lot of return on that investment. Everybody knows a spring can flex and compress so what's the big deal? Let's just model the other components that we really need to see and know that the spring is going to behave as it should. The last thing I'm going to cover today is working with the bill of material in an assembly. The way that assemblies are built by default, the options built into that assembly, working in a bill of material, you have the model data tab, the structure tab, and the parts only tab. One thing that's missed by many users, especially your experienced users that have been using Inventor for years, Autodesk will sometimes change the way Inventor functions and sometimes things like this are omitted on what's new features, for example, or what's new lectures. It's a high impact item though. When you look at the bill of material, you'll notice in the structure tab, you have your piece parts and your sub-assemblies. Notice that by default, I cannot get into the sub-assemblies to see what's there. One of the best practices and a good basic workflow going forward is on your assembly template and all assemblies going forward or any existing assemblies. You want to go to this structure tab right click on the tab go to view properties and you want to set the level of expansion to all levels so right now by default it's just set to first level that's only going to show you the sub assembly if I change that to show you all levels click OK I can now expand those sub assemblies to see those sub components again you would want to make this change in your template for the assembly environment as well that way any future assemblies you make going forward will have this type of workflow.